Hello FPL managers, today we're going to be rating first drafts sent in by you guys coming to game week one of the new FPL season. In today's video, we review five drafts that you guys have sent in to us via Twitter and have a look at the pros and cons of each team and how they should line up for game week one of the new season. So just before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to show support for the channel. And once again, click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. And with that being said, let's get into the video. So taking a look at the first draft, this one is from FPL United. So as his goalkeepers, he has gone with Sanchez and Foster. I do think these two will be a very common combination coming to the new season. As Sanchez is the second highest owned keeper and Foster is the third, with a 27 and 24% ownership respectively. I do think this does seem to be one of the better goalkeeping combinations out of all of them at the current stage, between 4.5 and 4 million pound keepers. So I do think that's a very good choice. Amongst his defenders, he has gone with Wesley for Fana, who I think will be in a lot of teams this season because he's such good value. I've definitely got him in my team as always got a 26% ownership and just 4.5 million pounds he should start for Leicester. Alexander Arnold, yep, he's definitely an essential one I think in the Liverpool defence. He didn't get as many goals as he would have liked last season from free kicks, but hopefully he can improve this year. And as I touched on earlier, Liverpool have some very good fixtures to start the season, so he could be a good short-term option. And Luke Shaw is the third defender, he's got leads in the first week. Shaw is easily the top owned defender in the game with a 43% ownership, which is actually 16% higher than any other player. This was a bit surprising, but he did put a very good shift in in the Euros, getting a lot of assists for England. So I do think he could be a good early option. Obviously, you might have a good start to the season. They've got Leeds, Southampton, Wolves, and Newcastle. They could probably get two clean sheets out of those four matches. Have a look at his midfield now. He's obviously going with Mo Salah. Chuck the captaincy armband on him. I think that's probably the best choice as well. Mo Salah is such a consistent performer. And he has gone with Harvey Barnes as well. He's one that I rated very highly last season. I think he could be a very good differential option in midfield for the new campaign as he was very impressive right before he got injured last season. Rafinha, he is one of the top own midfielders. He is the fourth highest own midfielder at the moment with a 24% ownership. He's always a good option to have, especially in that Leeds attack. They do score so many goals, so he's a good pick. And then as his second and premier option, he has gone with Bruno Fernandes. Forwards, Watkins, Calvert, Lewin, Tony. I do think this is going to be a very popular front three. Uh, Tony Watkins and Calvert-Lewin are the three highest owned forwards at the moment, so I do think they will be a very common combination. And having a look at his bench, he has gone with Lamptey, Ailing, and Basuma. Three very good 4.5 million pound options. Ailing does have a tricky start to the season. Lamptey and Basuma have good fixtures, so they're always good value. The only thing I'd say with this team is maybe Ailing at 4.5 isn't the best 4.5 option. He is definitely a good shab. Maybe the likes of Connor Cody or Rob Holding could be good options. Moving on to the second draft now, this one is from FPL Brian. For his goalkeepers, he has gone with Sanchez once again, and as the backup, he has gone with McGovern, who I do believe will be the backup keeper for Norwich. This is obviously a decent combination, of course. There is many 4 million pound keepers that you could go for, but I can't see why McGovern isn't a bad option. He has gone with Luka Dean in defence, who I think will be a very good option at the start of the season, because Everton have some great fixtures, and Dean did to that price drop as well, which does make him more tempting. Luke Shaw and Alexander Arnold I touched on before, they're very good options. And for his fourth defender, he has gone with John Stones, who I personally think could be a decent share. He's only owned by around 11% of managers, and Man City obviously got the most clean shoots last season by a mile, so they could be very good. For his midfield, he has gone with Diogo Jota, who I think could be good, as he hopefully can get some more starting minutes for Liverpool this season. As I said before, they have some very good starting fixtures, and to pair him with Mo Salah and that Liverpool midfield is not a bad choice. And for his second primo, he has gone with Raheem Sterling, who is obviously a very differential option with only a 2% ownership. Man City assets are always good options, it's just whether or not Sterling can get some starting minutes. Obviously, he was disappointing last season, but I definitely wouldn't write him off for the new campaign. And to cover the midfield, Saar I think is good value at 6 million. Up top, he has gone the captaincy on Mikel Antonio. I don't know if he's going to keep that, obviously, for game week one, but he could be a good differential shout. I do think Antonio and West Ham have some good fixtures to start, and Antonio did underperform his XG by a fair bit last year. And also, so did Neil Maupe, who his second striker is. He obviously underperformed his XG by a mile, so he does have that extra potential. For his bench, he has gone with Cody, Cantwell, and Tony, which I think is a very, very strong bench. I do rate this team quite highly. If I could do anything, it probably would be to change the four million pound goalkeeper of McGovern. And I personally am not too sure about Sterling, but I can see why people are going for him. And now moving on to the third first draft. This one is from FPL Boring Tales. 
So as his goalkeepers, he has gone with Martinez and Guaita, which is a combination that I haven't really seen that much before. Obviously, Martinez is the top-owned keeper in FPL at the moment with a 39% ownership, which is 12% higher than any other keeper. And I think Guaita at £4.5 million is definitely one that has been overlooked by a lot of managers, so he could definitely be a good option. For his defenders, he has gone with Lewis Dunk, Christensen, and Cresswell. Lewis Dunk could be good as he is £5 million and does offer that header potential. I would say that he is a decent differential option, but probably a little bit too expensive. Moving on to Christensen, I'm not too sure about him and his starting minutes. Chelsea do rotate their centre backs quite a lot, so Christensen might not be getting the most game time. But I do think Aaron Cresswell to finish off the defence is a very good asset. Moving on to the midfielders, we have touched on all these four players before. I do think Saar could be a good value option at £6 million and so more of a decent starting fixtures. Sal and Fernandez are obviously very good options and Diogo Jota as that second Liverpool midfielder could be good. Then he has gone with João Pedro up top. He was one of the highest scorers for Watford last season and was very impressive. He is also only 5.5 million, so he could be good value. Bamford at 8 is a good choice, and Ian Nacho is also a very good option. For his bench, he has gone with Jack Harrison, who I personally think is a very good asset that has been overlooked by a lot of people, despite scoring more points than Rafinha last year. Uh, Matt Target as well at 5 million could be good, and Wesley Fofana at 4.5 is definitely a good choice. So overall, if I could change anything with this team, I would say on the whole it is a very good side, but the main one to change would be Christensen. And moving on to the fourth draft, this is from Chris from FPL Dude. As his goalkeepers, he has gone with Sanchez and Steer. I think this could be a good option as Jed Steer will probably be the backup keeper to Emmy Martinez. And Aston Villa did get a lot of clean sheets last season, so I think that's a good choice. For his defenders, Dean, Alexander, Arnold, and Shaw, that is a very, very strong backline. And I do think all three of those players will be amongst the top scoring defenders for this season, especially early on in Gamex 1 to 5 anyway. For his midfield, he has gone with Salah and Jota as at Liverpool double up. I definitely think they could be good assets coming into the new campaign, especially considering they're good fixtures. Rashford as a differential option to Fernandez could be a good shout, and Grealish I think at eight million pounds is such a good choice, especially considering Watford's good starting fixtures. Moving on to his forwards, he has gone with Maupay up top. I think he could be a good choice as he is differential, has good fixtures, and he did underperform his XG last year, so hopefully he can improve. And then Calvert Lewin and Antonio are always good choices. For his bench, he has gone with Lamptey, who I think at 4.5 is a good choice. Alan, he is just a budget enabler, and Firmina could be a good choice as well as the defender for Watford. Overall, this is a very strong draft. The only thing that I could change would maybe be Alan, as obviously CDM still get too much game time. Maybe the likes of Gilmore or Basuma could help for that slightly higher attacking potential. So that's all we've got for today for rating your guys' first FPL drafts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. Once again, click that notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. And leave a comment which draft you guys thought was the best out of these five. And also drop your first draft in the comments as well. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.